Welcome into the On Enquire podcast live on a Monday afternoon. It's April Fool's Day, but we ain't fooling with this news. We got a busy day. Derek Piper and I get home, and it's a three text alert kind of day. Uh, I do want to mention uh, off the top of this. Um, Thoughts and prayers out to David Gibbs and his family. The Atlanta secondary coach uh, is resigning due to medical reasons. Brett Bielman just talked about it with us. Uh, they will make a hire after spring ball. They'll get through spring ball and then make a hire. So not ideal timing, but that's not the top of mind right now. And also rest in peace, Devontae Davis, a guy I never covered uh, outside of when he'd come back to school, but uh, just one of the all-time Oana greats, uh, dead at the age of 35. Just really, really unfortunate. But uh, we are focused on basketball on this podcast today, but I do want to mention those two items here off the top because Derek Piper, not a huge surprise. Dane Danger, a very high-impact player in the postseason, is out. Uh, he is transferring, entering the transfer portal, and Illinois also adding a transfer, Mercer I guess forward, Jake Davis, I, I, he played the three, four, and the five at times at Mercer. Not going to play the five uh, at Illinois, I can guarantee you that, but a sharpshooter that Illinois is bringing in. Uh, let's first talk about Dane Danger. This would not have been a surprise maybe a month ago, but given the month that he had, you and I were talking about it. Does Illinois all out push to, to keep him and, and center an offense around him? I think we got that answer today. Yeah, we did. And I think Illinois definitely liked the idea of keeping Dane Danger and a guy that it's a big reason why this season will be remembered with some hardware and will have made it obviously to the Elite Eight and his performance against Moorhead State uh, to be able to show up like he did in that one and uh, against Ohio State in the Big Ten tournament. Just played his best basketball down the stretch when you needed it and was a very selfless guy this season as far as understanding that his role wasn't what he wanted, but he always said the right things publicly about wanting to just get them as far as it could go in the postseason and just wanting to to be ready for whenever he was called upon and, and talking to people around the program. They said that, that wasn't just lip service. Like that's how he went about it. And obviously he or he had some frustrations and was down in the dumps a little bit, going from 22 minutes a game in the Big Ten the previous season to only I think eight uh, by the end of the Big Ten season is, is where he was in conference play. So uh, the talk recently was the Illinois was open and, and wanted to keep him just kind of as far as the idea of bringing him back on their team. But they knew that there was going to be conversations as far as his role. Would they start him at the five? Would they uh, already having some, some non shooters like a Ty Rogers, knowing that Marez Johnson's coming in that he wants, you know, they recruited him to play immediately and, and to be a, a focal point of their program. And then Imani Hansberry coming back too. So there was just kind of a wonder and, and figuring as far as what that role would look like. Would it align with what Dane wants? Obviously, what, what Dane has shown when he's been on the court, he can go somewhere and be someone starting five man and maybe even get uh, a decent amount of post touches uh, as a primary option, secondary option within somebody's offense. Also, the NIL tag is also something that you got to think about uh, in today's day and age. So I think for Illinois, the, the role was something they were conflicted on and, and probably as they uh, – analyzed it and I, I heard some of this there in uh boston was like you know a reason why we're number one or top five in offensive efficiency is because we space the floor so well so i don't know they really wanted to commit to making dane undoubtedly their starting five and then the nil uh sounds like that there are some good numbers thrown out there for bigs right now that dane could command uh, a decent payday somewhere and i think as you align the role with the nil uh illinois wasn't probably willing to go the range that others would be. So uh, Dane on the move, can't blame him. Uh, I think Atlanta fans should be happy with what the, you got out of him uh, this season. And he'll get touches and, and some some dollar signs somewhere. This reminds me of like when you have a phenomenal defense, like if you're the Baltimore Ravens, Derek, and you have that third edge rusher who looks like a star but is behind the two guys who are proven already. And then he hits free agency and you see everybody wants him. Like and, and there's a reason. Maybe he can be a star for somebody else. I think Dane has earned this. I, I think Dane has shown that he can be a focal point of an offense. But I also don't think, like, I've seen some of the comments here early. Jordan, the amount of work they did with Dane, this is 100% fail on the coaching staff. You won't be able to spin this any other way. Def, Dane should have played more throughout the season, both for load management and once defensive priorities shifted. Happy for his own degree, wishing him the best in his new opportunities. I don't think Illinois made a big mistake with Dane Danger this year. They were the number one or number two offense throughout the year because of the way they played. And I, this revisionist history, like Dane wasn't very good uh, in January. 
right? Like he wasn't making a big impact and his defense, most of all was, was a problem. And then he got better to his credit. And when he got better defensively and on the rebounds, he got more playing time and he made a huge impact. Illinois doesn't win the big 10 tournament without him. Illinois might lose to Moorhead state without Dane danger. So I think we can have two things here where it's like, this makes sense for Dane and for Illinois. I still think they can be good. I think Dane Danger is going to average double digits wherever he goes next year. And I think Illinois can still win a lot of games. Um, So to me, this just kind of made sense for both sides. But Dane Danger was a proven scorer, Derek, on a team that doesn't have any proven scores. So that is the concern here. It's now you got to go get more talent because Dane Danger was a proven Big Ten talent. No doubt. And yeah, I mean, it's it's too early to make some grand takeaways about – what the roster is going to look like. Oh, well now there's not a proven starting caliber commodity on, on the team. I mean, we're so early in the off season to make those, those type of judgments, but yeah, I fully agree with your point. Like Dane wasn't playing a lot during the meat of the big 10 schedule. And when he was getting opportunities, he wasn't giving the staff a whole lot of reasons to give him any more minutes. Like it almost looked like when Amani was starting to get healthy, as you looked at those Penn state and Maryland games on the road, that Amani was probably going to take his role and that Dane may not even, be but a spot minute guy when you you need somebody versus a, a bigger front court or to give some fouls or be, be more physical than Amani. But obviously, Dane deserves a lot of credit for flipping the switch and turning it on and play with a higher motor, play with more activity defensively. We get saw him run the floor in transition, which was something that up to that point wasn't a part of his game. And let's be so, honest, Derek, he probably knew I'm leaving. Yet he's still committed to that and made the team better. Like I, I think that's a phenomenal statement to him, Fletch, uh, everybody else involved, the coaches. That it's like, hey, we we know you might be going elsewhere, but you can still help us, big man. And he did. So I, I think that's a great thing. Yeah, I mean, he could have easily checked out. He by playing that way earned himself more opportunities, more money, and the opportunity for Illinois to evaluate it. I, I don't know. Dane would probably be the only one that could tell you if Illinois went all out and said, here's. $250,000, $300,000, and you're a starting five man, he might not have gone anywhere. We might not be talking about this today. Um, so that could have been something that, that swayed it. I don't necessarily disagree. I don't disagree, actually, just flat out with Illinois' decision not to go there. I'm assuming they didn't, uh, just based on what I've heard. So uh, I think that – and to the point of 100% fail, like they got Dane – his body right to be this Dane Danger. When he showed up from Baylor, I mean, he was 300 pounds. He was out of shape. He was – coming off a foot injury, they had to get him right with Fletch and, and to get him back in the best shape of his life, get him to the best shape of his life to play like that. And yeah, you could criticize that sometimes not giving him more minutes didn't allow him to get in a rhythm, didn't allow him to maybe crack that next whatever it is for him with his role. But uh, it, his presence on the court clogged up spacing for Marcus Damas, it clogged up spacing for Terrence Shannon, and, and even just throwing him into the paint. I think there still remains to be seen can he limit turnovers enough to make that effective? Can he finish consistently around the rim uh, against high major competition, against good bigs? So th- those are questions with him for sure. But no doubt that uh, his contributions in the tournament, postseason play, rebounding at the rim, rim protection, he was better as a five-man defender than Coleman Hawkins was. That I, I get all of that. So uh, it does open up a, a big need, I think, at the five to have a veteran there along with Merez, along with the ability to play Amani uh, at that, whether it be the four or the five. Uh, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if they end up with someone that can stretch the floor and, and present that dynamic as well. Yeah, two things um, I want to go off of, then we'll switch over to Jake Davis here is one, no more danger zone at the uh, State Farm Center. I'll miss that. That's uh, a loss. It was That's a great a loss. It was a great t shirt, too, the danger zone uh, t shirt with the Top Gun logo. That's a loss. Uh, that is a loss. Um, number two, Welcome Amani Hansberry to a huge role, right? Like we talked about it after the UConn loss. Is there room on a team for both Amani Hansberry and Dane Danger when you already have Ty Rogers, Merez Johnson, guys that aren't going to really stretch the floor? Amani shooting those threes, I think, is big. Like Merez and Amani, those guys look like 20 minute a game players to me next year. Um, I, I don't know if either of those guys can be a 30 minute a game big, but I, I love Amani's game. And, and as you said, I thought there were times like I thought he brought more to the court just because of his effort, energy, and intensity on defense and on the glass uh, than Danger did earlier in the year. And then you're starting to see that skill set, Derek, that you love so much is a high school prospect that he can stretch the floor a little bit. He's an undersized big. He's going to be able to score against the post, against fives. I'm not sure. But if he's in there with Merez and 
that, that's a formidable front court if he if he can make some of those shots. So I'm excited to see what he does with that role. But as you said, they need a veteran and they need a stretch veteran to go along with Merez Johnson, with Ty Rogers potentially playing a little bit more four next year, uh, and Amani Hansbury at that four or five. No doubt. Yeah, it was great to see Amani make those threes late. I know it was garbage time in the UConn game, but he did flash it at moments this year of stepping out and, and being able to knock that down and something that he's worked a lot on. And it even showed that EYBL scene of, of being able to flash. And I was mid-range shot, I always thought was was pretty darn good. So he's got that ability. Uh, we haven't seen to this point, based in, in comparison to his high school career, he's a really good passer on the perimeter. Like you can run some stuff through him. He can do some things off the dribble uh, to just kind of dribble into handoffs to uh, do some similar type stuff as, as Coleman Hawks. I'm not saying he's going to be that that level of a playmaker at times. I know uh, Coleman, there was some highs and lows within it, but Amani's got some of that that I think we'll see develop later on in his career. Obviously a junkyard dog type of rebounder. Uh, and can he fully just add the ability to have him play the four? Because of the five, yes, there are concerns of finishing against legit size and guarding legit size. Yeah. I mean, he's he's six eight, six seven, six eight. Uh, obviously strong, physically stout, and uh, isn't going to move his ground a whole lot when he's getting back down. But can he provide enough rim protection or, or, or do enough on those taller centers that uh, it, it's uh, it's something that you can get away with at the five? So uh, a veteran there, uh, I think, is is obviously really important. Not, not that I think Merez is going to come in and, and probably rebound and defend like a like a veteran for the most part. But the offensive stuff and and some of the floor spacing stuff, I think, would be really nice to get in the portal at the five. What is the ideal guy in the portal there? I mean, the, the dude from Stanford, uh, I wish I knew Ed pronounced his name exactly right. But is Maxime it- Raynaud, something like there that. There you go. Maxime Raynaud from uh, Paris, France, native. Uh, Seven-footer that can stretch it and shoot. Uh, I know he's not like a high volume three point shooter, but he he can play on the perimeter. His assist numbers are decent. He's thought to be one of the top two or three players in the portal as of right now. So uh, I know Illinois is involved with him. So I, I think just the idea of him being someone that's more of a obviously polished and, and proven scorer at the high major level, having done it in the Pac 12, can s- step out and shoot to provide some of that spacing, add that in with Merez, add that in with Amani he would be a, a really, really nice get. And just to have some more of that legit size, because even obviously, I know it's not to overreact too much to to what Klingon did to you or Edie. I'm not saying that, you know, this guy would automatically erase if you ran into a, a giant next year, but Coleman guarding the the five spot on the post was, um, was a challenge at times. So uh, he's the ideal. There will be other bigs that, that they will go after and evaluate and more will hit the portal as well. But I do think that, Ideally, they want a stretch guy uh, at the at the five. Uh, definitely, they, they were going to look at a stretch four anyway. But uh, I think that a, a, a taller stretch five would be something that they'll definitely be intrigued by. All right, let's talk about the Illini's latest edition next. But first, let's hear from one of our great sponsors. Stress-free this spring with Factors, delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, My Favorite Protein Plus, or Vegan and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and fuel up your springtime goals. With Factor, you get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with Factor's ready-to-eat meals, so you can get back to doing what you love this spring. If you're looking for gourmet meals, try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. These are no-fuss, no-mess meals. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the good stuff. So head to factormeals.com slash Illini50 and use code Illini50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code Illini50 at factormeals.com slash Illini50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. All right, Derek, uh, Illinois adds a transfer already. Uh, They've been doing work over the last two weeks while they're preparing for the NCAA tournament. And one guy they focused on and wanted to add right away, I've heard this buzz for about a week now, is Jake Davis out of Mercer. He commits to the Illini today, made that official. Uh, What is Illinois getting 
in the six foot six, 220 pound forward out of Mercer in the Southern Conference. He's a really good shooter. And you look at his numbers as a freshman, sometimes guys struggle in that first year making the jump to college. Can they be consistent from beyond the arc? But for him to shoot 39% from deep on the season, decent volume. And then in the SOCON conference, uh, within conference play, he was sixth within there, shooting 43% from distance. So uh, in hearing from the staff kind of what they look at, they, they love that he's an off-the-movement shooter. Like You see there, obviously, just straight-up catch-and-shoot, pretty pure stroke. But a guy that can come off screens, doesn't need to be completely feet set to, to be able to then square up and fire. So uh, he's got that to him. He's also just a hard playing six foot six forward. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, he's played kind of a variety of the front court spots. I think they see him as a, a three or a four, um, not super laterally quick. So maybe he does got to play the four most likely just kind of match up defensively. But uh, the great thing too, is you get, I know it's, it's the portal era. Or I should say the, the multi portal era, as far as the transfers and you, you aren't going to be guaranteed to have a guy, even if he has multiple years of eligibility, but he has three years left to really work on him. They're, they're definitely going to try to, to work on his body, to get him into tip top shape and be ready for the athleticism and size, obviously that you face in the big 10. So uh, Indianapolis area native is always, I talked to him earlier. He mentioned always wanting to play in the big 10 and uh, he's bought in on a role. He's, He's someone that just is okay to come off the bench, to make shots, to be tough uh, and be a supporting cast member. So, uh, when they identified that, they they really had this thing, like you mentioned, kind of in the bag uh, until their their season was over. But uh, they evaluated him like what they saw. He aligned as far as their vision for him. And uh, you see, even see there, he can do a little bit off the dribble, too. I think they want to continue to work on just maximizing that skill set other than just being a shooter. But uh, for us, floor spacing offense, we know how much that was just a part of what Illinois did this year. I think going forward, you're always going to want that with Brad, that to be someone that can just knock down shots from the outside is really his primary role. It's like the first edition always is the last edition to some fans. Like, what is this the, the main guy we're going to get? This is a nice piece. Like, nine points, 39% uh, from three. It's a rotational player. Um, I would imagine is his first year, and maybe he can become more than that. But this team needs shooting. Like, you look at next year's roster, Derek, and, you know, you look at the scholarship grid that we've put together, and, you know, Ty Rogers is on that. Marez Johnson, Amani Hansberry still got to prove himself. Dre Gibbs Lawhorn still has to prove himself. So, you know, Luke Goody uh, comes back as, as your one shooter like that you feel really, really good about. Sincere Harris is another guy, not much of a shooter there. So they need shooting. You can never have enough of it. And he brings, you know, I, if, if he's playing the three, that's positional size, but still a guy with some size um, that, that can get a shot up over some people. So um, what do you think he can be next year and beyond? Yeah, I think next year it's probably that that off-the-bench shooter type. And uh, beyond, uh, we'll see just kind of how the, the the roster just matures and, and, and develops. Same thing with him, with his game, how that, how that ultimately goes. But maybe he is just a probably a, a role guy uh, just in general in terms of the vision. But like you mentioned, just a, a shot maker that comes in and, and really beyond Luke Goody, like like you said, like you look at the, the three-point numbers for Illinois this past year and their top shooters, you look at like Terrence Shannon, Damask, uh, Coleman, a, a number of those guys won't be able to come back, obviously. So Luke Goody's really the only guy that you would trust and say is a, a proven shot maker. And when you're going to have Amani and you're going to have uh, more so notably Merez and Ty and uh, – potentially sincere and see how that works. You're going to need floor spacers. So uh, that's something that I just think that he'll come in probably, I would say probably ideally looking at it a four, but you know, it it is multi-positional and, and how that ultimately works, but just a hard playing shot maker. Maybe it's 15 minutes off the bench. Uh, We'll see how it goes. You know, you never ultimately know uh, until the the dust settles on the roster and uh, guys, obviously if we were sitting here a year ago and we were, trying to talk about, you know, what's Marcus DeMass role going to ultimately look at? Right. We look like we would have probably looked like idiots, even though we liked the addition at the time and thought he'd be a, a nice piece and would be a starter for Illinois. But you never truly know, although, uh, yeah, the shot making is obviously proven and it's a, a pretty pure stroke. It's a, it's a guy that's – I think that translates regardless of the level. Yeah. Um, you know, when this happens, he's a, he's a big shooter. What does he bring defensively, Derek? Because – People are going to comp him to Luke Goody. 
uh, right away. Mm -hmm. So, so do you see similarities, differences between those two? Admittedly, yeah. need to look at a little bit more of his stuff on film. I know that in talking to people, they say, "Hey, you know, flat out, he's not the most laterally quick." And he even mentioned, he's like, "I, I think I'm a pretty good defender, but I do need to get better at defending in one-on-one -on -one situations." So, uh, guarding in space and anything that he saw in the SoCon will be different than obviously the Big Ten with the athleticism. If he is uh, in particular going to play on the wing, and I know that Illinois at times has has gone to switching. Again, we won't know fully what the schematics will be until the roster is set. Brad's did a good job of teetering that or tinkering that, I should say, to uh, what that ultimate roster looks like. So I, I wouldn't – I'm confident here saying he's not going to be a lockdown defender, anything like that. He is strong, though. I, I do feel like he can – if guys try to play through him, he's, he's got a, a nice stout build to him. But um, we'll have to look a little bit more as far as uh, what that looks like and kind of what his – Synergy numbers look like at that end as, as well. So before we get into potential other targets, Derek, we'll do about 10 more minutes here. Um, any more thoughts on, on roster retention here? I mean, I feel a lot better about Amani Hansberry coming back. Dre's already said it. I got a story coming out on Amani and Dre, a little bit of sincere. Sincere told you he likes his role next year. I still think that's one that maybe has to play out here. Um, well, Goody went through senior night. I know I, I have no questions about Ty Rogers uh, talking with him after the game. What do you think of of roster retention? Because you do want to bring back some kind of core here that has been part of this program and, and knows what it takes and saw what it takes to win. I think it's great that DGL's come out so strong and saying that he wants to be back and plans to be back. Also a guy that he played with, uh, Jake Davis in AAU, so someone that he's familiar with and excited about to team up with him again. But uh, we know his talent, a guy that we were hyping in the offseason, and they saw some really good things at times on the practice floor um, just needed to get that seasoning uh, this this past year and, and playing behind some vets. And I think another year for him, he could he could break out. So uh, defensively, like his his energy uh, and, and all those things, and then offensively, he's talented, he's athletic. So uh, that's a big deal. I agree with you on Ty. Luke will be interesting. Uh, I know that when I asked him on the radio, you know, what does the senior night thing mean? Uh, should we read into you maybe saying goodbye? He's like, no, it's – to honor my accomplishment. It, it does make you raise your eyebrows though. You, you sometimes you ask guys through, you know, and that this applies beyond, I think it was Connor season at Wisconsin at one point came out and said, I'm not leaving uh, when he was asked during the season. And then ultimately hits the transfer portal. So you never fully know uh, as far as that goes. I know some will look at Jake Davis edition and say, well, this must mean Luke is, is gone. I haven't heard that. Uh, so I think it does need to play out sincere is probably somebody that will want to watch the other pieces, how they align. And there is that balance. Like It's kind of like Pod, right? Like yeah. Pod was kind of watching what they were doing. Um, and eventually they, they get a couple of really good players. He's like, I, I got to find a role somewhere. And good for yeah, and it's tough because as far as if you were like advising a player like that, some of the, the spots can get eaten up by other guys that decide they're going in on the front end. So there is sometimes a risk to waiting, but then also teams will get desperate. Maybe you're – your price tag goes up a little bit more. We've seen that at late at the end of some cycles here. So um, Sincere told me that, yeah, he likes his situation, but never know entirely uh, as far as that goes. Nico Moretti, what does that look like? Is he okay with uh, being in the mix as a point guard and, and developing uh, a little bit more? Not probably going to be your – they're going to go out and get a, get a ball handler, probably get a point guard. Uh, and Jace Butler someone they really, really like. So uh, I do think it's important to bring back some pieces, but – Obviously, this this coaching staff's not afraid to go out and and fill it in the portal as well. All right, Derek, with a couple minutes left here, uh, let's talk about some potential targets. AJ Store, Wisconsin, is in the transfer portal, and it's already been reported he's, he's top four. Uh, Illinois is in the top four with him. Some big hitters like Kansas, Kentucky are going to be involved in, in this kind of one. I don't understand the hesitancy with people around AJ Store. Um, this is an all big 10 second team guy midway through the year. He was probably first team. He was just a sophomore and he was a star for Wisconsin. Like he really elevated that team. And if you watch the big 10 tournament, I don't know why you'd have some hesitancy about the talent here. And that's what the portal is about. It's about getting talent. Yes. You need some players that fit the roster and culture guys like Brett Underwood got last year. This team needs a star. Like they need their Terrence Shannon, and Store was better as a sophomore than Terrence Shannon was as a junior at Texas Tech. So, um, 
I go all out. That, that that's that's my number one target. Like if you get AJ Store, you're an NCAA tournament team next year. Uh, you got to fill some pieces, but he's the kind of star that's a first team All Big Ten caliber guy. Illinois needs one of those guys. Agree with 100 percent of what you just said. He's going to command a high price tag, and he's worth it for Illinois. Like, as far as stepping into the shoes of, of Terrence Shannon. I think Illinois has a great sell there, what they were able to do development-wise. I think people maybe forget that and probably undersell what Terrence was, like you kind of mentioned there, at the end of his Texas Tech tenure and what he became at Illinois. Like You could have easily poked holes in Terrence's profile as a, a player at, at Texas Tech. I mean, he was pretty much a, a catch-and-shoot, 3-and-D guy who was a slasher in transition but didn't really do a whole lot off the dribble within a half court, turned it over a decent amount, especially – as he kind of operated as the the on ball primary um, in ball screens or whatnot creator uh, in an offense, so um, you Joey and I were talking about it too. I, I don't remember. You know, we've been to all around the world in the last three weeks. I don't remember exactly where we were uh, when we were talking about it, but like stores sophomore stats on paper next to Io Desumu's sophomore stats, I they were pretty comparable, <laughs> like really close, right? They were like almost the same. So uh, if you believe in your development. And just to take that that body, that athleticism, uh, and the ability to score it, and maybe you add some – I know passing is one thing that he hasn't really done a whole lot of in terms of making guys better. And, and sometimes they, some of the knocks out of Wisconsin would be maybe the ball sticks with him a little bit. You can work on that. And yeah. I would love to have him. I, I think he's priority A for Illinois, and I expect that, and know that they're already uh, full speed ahead on that. Uh, and Dom asked, why would AJ store leave Wisconsin, go to Illinois? I think AJ is going to Kansas or Kentucky. He might, but let's not ask like Illinois doesn't have a cell. Terrence Shannon, Io DeSumo, this kid went to, is from Rockford, went to Kankakee High School. He was committed to Illinois at one point. Yes, it was to Chin Coleman, uh, who is the elite assistant uh, for Illinois in that recruitment. Illinois has got NIL. Illinois has got a brand now. Like, I don't think we need to act like Illinois has no chance for guys like this. This was seven years ago, five years ago, that would probably be more um, of a of a relevant point. I, I think just to offer it up, not saying that, you know, people look at Illinois above those programs necessarily, but who made the furthest run in the tournament this year of those three? That'd be, that'd right. be Illinois. So uh, Illinois has shown that they can win. They, they have NIL. I mean, Terrence made a, a pretty penny coming back to Illinois, uh, more so than he would have done so on a two-way. Yes, Kentucky has a bigger – NIL person no one does overall so like if they want to throw buku dollars at him then maybe they could just ultimately outbeat Illinois on the price but as far as the development the reasons to come to Illinois the close to home stuff like I think they check all the boxes I wouldn't worry about just prestige of of UK and KU over Illinois uh snap says danger to Minnesota book it he fits their style that's what I'm talking about like for Minnesota a danger he's from Minneapolis uh would be perfect like a team that's just trying to make the tournament you run offense through danger they just lost for Payne. Uh, that will make a lot of sense. Fly on, I fly. Maddox from Toledo. What do you think of Dante Maddox? We've out of Chicago Heights, right, Derek? Um, and uh, was great player at Toledo. Will Illinois uh, prioritize another Toledo guard for a second straight year? I think they will, and that they are. I know that he's visiting TCU coming up here soon. It seems there was a report that he was down to eight schools, I think, and Illinois is one of those. I know they like him quite a bit, especially as a scorer, a guy that can really shoot it. It's been in the 40s as far as three-point percentage. So uh, someone that can can really let it fly and then also get into the lane and make some things happen. Uh, I do know that as far as just – is he a, a point guard? I, I don't know that he's that. He was Toledo's point guard this past year, obviously playing kind of wingman to uh, RJ, or Ray J. Dennis prior to that. Uh, it's really the only season in college he played at Cal State Fullerton prior to Toledo that he was in the – the role is the primary ball handler. So I think for Illinois standpoint, probably more of a combo guard is more of a scorer than a facilitator. Could he do some stuff on the ball maybe as, as a secondary creator? Yes. I just don't know that he would be their quote unquote point guard addition, but yeah, I think they, I, I think they like him a lot. I think they could view that he could come in similar to like a, you know, Lance Jones at Purdue. Lance Jones comes in and shot maker, got some strength to him, um, decent athleticism and Illinois could, could kind of have a similar role for him as far as that goes, whether it's going to be, you know, is he going to be some kind of microwave six man guy? Is he going to be a starter? That would all depend on number one, how the pieces line up and then how it plays out in practice. But I know they like him a lot. 
Yeah, um, and, and you'd have a heck of a sell if you're selling him on, on starters minutes for this team. Uh, Dom wants to know Cliff Omori. Cliff Omori. I don't see that fit. Um, St. John's is is one team that gets mentioned a lot. Cliff, go make your money. I think that's what he's doing right now. And listen, I get it that Zach Eady and, and Klingon are, are, are teams that you lose to and you want that dominant big like Kofi Coburn, Derek, but like Zach Eady's not going to be there next year. Uh, Klingon won't be there next year. You know what I mean? Like, I think they found a way that they want to play. So, yes, you need people to be able to battle those bodies. That's what Marez Johnson's here for. And that's they're going to add a, a big man here uh, in the portal. Um, I, I just don't see them getting that traditional low post big. Otherwise, I think Dane Danger would have been the priority here. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm not going to sit here and say if they did add Cliff that it wouldn't be a, a really nice get. Like, he's a great rim protector, really good rebounder. Has not really gotten better as a back-to-the-basket type guy, but could he play – pick and roll offense. And, and I'm sure he's sitting there saying I can do a lot more damage in the paint when I actually have shooters around me. I, I didn't True. other than Cam Spencer last year, there wasn't a whole lot of that going on at Rutgers. So a uh, really good player. And, uh, but I agree. I think Illinois just stylistically loves the spacing that they had this year and, and wants to be able to continue that. And this is the way we think about it. You got to prioritize cap space nowadays in college basketball. That's it. Yeah. So what do you want to prioritize for Illinois? It's wings and it's scores. Um, I, I think they got these and Marez Johnson's your Cliff Amore. Like that, that's what you're he's not he's about the same size, uh, maybe a little shorter, but that's who your Cliff Amore is, is gonna be next year. All right, any final thoughts there before I let you go? It's gonna be wild. Yeah, it's gonna be wild here going forward. Um, I, I will throw one more name in there. We talked about Maddox, we talked about store Marcus Hill, point guard uh, out of bowling green, a, a guy that's also from Rockford. So I think there's a connection familiarity between him and AJ store uh, average 19, 20 a game this past year, really good downhill point guard does not shoot it very well. So that is a knock on him, but I know that Illinois is, is definitely in contact and appealed uh, by what he brings to the table, especially if there would be some kind of additional push for store, like if store wants to play with him type of thing, but, uh, and then wait and see what Kylan Boswell is going to do. I'm going to throw that out there just because I think a lot of people are talking about it and wondering about it. The Champagne native uh, didn't have a, especially a, a very good finish to the year at Arizona. That's one that I've kind of got my eyes on in, in case he pops into the portal. So that's going to be someone that Illinois obviously has a, a previous relationship with. And does he just, could he use a change of scenery? And, and would that be something that Illinois would be interested? I think that they definitely would be if he is, ultimately becoming available. So we're in the early stages here. We literally just got home. We need to have a little bit of a slow day. The neighbors want me to mow my yard, but I, I haven't, I yeah, haven't, you done it. I haven't said it, but I, I just feel like they would. You got the retired neighbors mow a couple yeah. times a week. Yeah, ah, man. Making us look bad, man. Make yeah. They, they, uh, if, if they don't know what we've been doing, uh, they, they're going to think I'm just a, a terrible neglecting, uh, husband, dad, homeowner. Yeah. Well, we kind of have been for the last yeah, yeah, maybe we are. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, at least we're home and we get to report on this stuff and can spend some time with the kids. And uh, Fedigator asked, when does the portal close? May 1st. But as we know with Matthew Meyer, you can commit after that. So you don't have to commit by then. Uh, but uh, yeah, we got uh, a long way to go. Going to be a really busy month. We'll cover it all at Alana Inquirer. Thanks to the 600 plus spending a mid day with us on the YouTube channel. Hit that like button, subscribe to us, hit the notifications bell. We got plenty at Illini Inquirer. Derek has been very, very busy. Uh, we got plenty of content up there with the latest Illini news and what we're hearing. Oh, we got spring football to cover as well. So keep tuned there. Thank you for listening to the Illini Inquirer podcast. Give us a follow rating review wherever you get your podcasts. Everybody have a great day. Take care of each other. We'll talk to you next time right here on the Illini Inquirer podcast.